Hey, soldiers, we got a county within California who says we want out. We want to secede from this state. We're paying taxes. We have no uh, representation. Crime is just out of control. The government's not protecting us. That is the first uh, obligation of government. Why else would you have government, right, if they can't protect you? The citizens of El Dorado County have had enough. So we're starting to see more of the uh, rumblings of secession. Okay, We're seeing it happen actively from an economic standpoint. When we see folk get up and leave California, New York, go to states like Arizona, Texas, Florida. The problem with that, though, is a lot of the people that are leaving those states because they are going to where their money is treated better, they're too stupid to understand that they created, not all of them, but some certainly, I, I know some of these people, they created the situation in the state they're fleeing from, and they are taking those same ideologies with them to a new state. So the liberal ideology is quite parasitic in that way. And uh, like locusts, they just, oh, here's a nice cornfield. Let's settle here. Okay, a day later, all the corn's gone. Oh, one locust gets up. Let's go over there. There's another cornfield. Oh, okay, this is this will work. Boom, day later, the corn's gone. So that is what you got to worry about. You know, I'm sure everyone from El Dorado County is not voting for the liberal policies that... Um, have infected the state of California, but got to be careful because in 20 years you can turn around and Florida and Texas could be just as blue, if not bluer than California and New York are right now. El Dorado County group mole secession from California. Frustrated by what they call a lack of representation, some residents of El Dorado County east of Sacramento are exploring a plan to split the Golden State uh, split from the Golden State and form their own state, their own state within a state. And I know that you're wondering, well, why aren't they just leaving? So many people are leaving. Why don't they just pack up and get the hell out of there altogether? Treat it like Sodom and Gomorrah and just drive away. And as your wife, you're driving away and your wife goes to, she wants to look. No, don't look back. Whatever you do, don't look back and you just drive until you see a sign that says now leaving the state of California. Why don't they do that? I'll get into why they are not leaving or why they're reluctant to leave in just a moment. If enough residents support the idea, the Republic for El Dorado state group will take the matter directly to Congress, bypassing the state legislature that has squashed numerous past requests. We're trying to find a way for it to happen without having to go to California on our knees begging for them to release us because we know they will not. These residents are really between a rock and a hard place because they're absolutely, uh, absolutely correct. California's never going to sign off on it. And I'm going to tell you why. I'll tell you why. It's going to reveal itself in this next sentence. You're a smart audience. I'm sure you're going to get it. Uh, but anyway, Sharon Durst is commenting to the Epoch Times, Epoch Times, Epoch Times, uh, when she said they're not going to let us go. The county encompasses about 1,800 square miles along the Sierra Nevada that includes South Lake Tahoe, Placerville, Pollock Pines, Fallen Leaf, Meeks Bay, and many other small towns and villages. Lake Tahoe, high dollar. Okay, and I can imagine that the rest of these uh, little enclaves are high dollar as well. High dollar means they pay a pretty penny in property taxes. This is California we're talking about. So these people want to go with where their money is being treated best, but they don't want to leave. They want to create that environment where they are. Good luck to them, but um, mm, this is a tall order. But again, we're going to get to why they don't want to leave. Today, the rural county of less than 200,000 people attracts tourists to its wine country and recreational offerings. So there it is right there. A lot of these folk probably are heavily invested in the wine business. You can't pick up a vineyard and just take it to another state, right? Uh, then you got the businesses that support that infrastructure. And uh, they, like I said, they're heavily vested. And this is a shame because, well, it's not a shame if they've got assets like that, that that's still good, but it kind of traps them there. 
Okay, you very well can't pick up and leave and find another idyllic location in another state, a friendly state with regard to economics and not have to pay. If you want to, you know, kind of one for one exchange, get kind of the same thing you have now, you're going to pay for that. All right. You're, you're really going to pay for that. And you might not want to sell the property you have in California, especially if that real property, that real estate, and we talk about this all the time, is producing revenue and income. Okay, if you got wine, uh, then if you got grapes, you know, you're selling the wine, or maybe you're making the bottles, or maybe you're, you know, you're a landscaping company that helps to take care of these grounds. You can't leave. You're trapped. I have seen people get trapped in communities. Uh, with regard to economic standards changing in the 80s when, you know, the CIA thought it would be a good idea to bring crack cocaine into the uh, inner cities to help them fund the uh, uh, Iran-Contra conflict when they decided to do that. Look it up. It happened. Um, that whole thing is when the urban neighborhoods started to really shift. Now, look, it was a highly concentrated area in terms of population, Baltimore City, like any of these other places. But we never had the type of crime and violence that New York saw back before Giuliani. OK, we never had that level. In fact, back in Baltimore, you, when you did have someone get um, uh, murdered, homicided, they uh, were usually in the game. OK, and that has changed here recently because... We thought it would be a good idea as a nation to engage in a national mania where we said uh, we don't need the police. And furthermore, what we also need to do at the same damn time is we need to reduce penalties on criminal activity. And so we created the perfect storm. Now we're paying for it. And that is part of the reason why the residents of El Dorado County are fed up. All right. Because they say um, that crime is out of control. And they're feeling the brunt of it. According to the website for the group, the residents of El Dorado County have no local, state, or federal representation or congressional representation. Uh, none of the state or federal representatives that serve El Dorado County live in El Dorado County. Now, I will push back on that. Uh, the way these districts are uh, situated, you don't have to live in the county if the way i know here in maryland take um our congressional district it spans at least two counties the county we live in and the county just to the south of us howard county now that congressional representative is quasi and fume he could live in howard county and be just fine i mean he lives in the district right um now we do have local representation for the county, okay, our county council. Um, but the other piece of it is, and, and that makes sense, your county council lives in your county. So they're not saying they don't have county council representation. They're saying congressional and state. But with regard to the state, uh, again, in the state of Maryland, you have our districts. Our districts pretty much adhere to county uh you know, borders, but I'm not sure if that is the case everywhere in Maryland, but it's not in California. So you could have someone who is designated to represent El Dorado County from the state legislature. It doesn't live in that county. And another reason why they may not is because El Dorado County is not a cheap place to live. And it is California on top of that. We're talking legislators. All right. These are not the best and brightest among us. These are not people are not bringing in millions of dollars. OK, uh, so they might not be able to afford to live in El Dorado County that uh, in the best scenario, best case scenario, that does not preclude that representative from being able to represent that area. But probably the other piece of it is that it's not really heavily populated. So with only 2,000, you know, families, uh, 200,000 rather. And this is California we're talking about. This is the most populated um, state. They may, you know, loyalties may lie elsewhere. Um, the residents of El Dorado County are saying an invasion at the state's border 
sanctuary policies and rampant crime violate the county's rights. Well, hey, welcome to America 2023 because we're all dealing with that. All right. Uh, a few places you can go and wind up in a state where, uh, you know, there's not crime as a result of the kind of the new ideology we've adopted, national ideology of less policing, more criminal friendly laws. And you do find a preponderance of that in blue uh, states. That is for sure. No one can deny that. Right. And if you try to go ahead and provide me with statistical proof I, and I will get on here and say, hey, I stand corrected. Uh, my ego is not attached to that, but I doubt if that will happen. Uh, the group has only officially met uh, one time and that was in May, so a few months ago, but they're planning to hold another town hall July 10th. If allowed to secede, El Dorado State could create its own constitution and a style of living that the locals want, according to Durst. Their interpretation of California's constitution guarantees them a Republican form of government, meaning their voice should be represented. Uh, represented. But this isn't happening. Um, and, well, you know, just, just because it says something on the marquee doesn't necessarily mean... Wasn't it called the Democratic Republic of the Congo? Okay. Damn, come on. No one's going to name it the federal dictatorship of, you know, Fidel Castro. They're not going to do that. So what it says on the marquee is oftentimes very different from the reality. Durst said, for example, their state senator in District 4, which stretches across 13 counties. OK, so it's uh, the state senator is Senator Mary Alvarado Gill. She's a Democrat, represents around 1 million residents, okay, 13 counties. So this lady can live in any of 13 counties uh, and still be good, still be said to live in her district. Doesn't choose to live in one county, El Dorado, 200,000 people, okay, 20% of her district, okay. The group also argues they are guaranteed to have Congress help them with foreign invasions and domestic violence, both of which are rampant in the state with an influx of undocumented immigrants and skyrocketing crime. Again, welcome to America. Hard time on planet Earth 2023. Right now, people are leaving California, but we don't want to leave our homes. We don't want to leave what we have built. Unreasonable. We just want to leave California. People carry skis as they walk towards a resort in South Lake Tahoe, California. That's kind of one of the idyllic scenes you see here. Uh, this is the kind of place this is. Former County Supervisor Ray Nutting, who, by the way, was arrested in 2013 and later acquitted of charges related to receiving state grants, is helping to organize the, econ the economic side of the plan. We have an economic base that is renewable in terms of agriculture tourism, and water supply, he told the Epoch Times. Hey guys, there's a country called Lesotho. If you look at the map, it's contained within the geography of the country of South Africa. So we do see that, but that's not the way the United States is set up. I think actually there's a prohibition of having a state within the borders of another state. We are very blessed in terms of who we are in El Dorado County, and our tax base absolutely will be enough to deliver critical services. He sees taxes going down for residents if they split from California, so this is a major issue. The state taking money. The state's income, sales, and gas taxes are some of the highest in the nation. Those are on top of assorted fees for electricity usage, businesses, climate action, and many other fees in charge. Yeah. And these people, they're not like, you know, the poor working man who is just enough to get a couple of hours with the kids and dinner with the wife and before you got to go to bed and do it all over again the next day, right? And, oh, you want me to calculate how much I'm paying in taxes? I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't think the middle class is doing that. Okay. 
Not until they get to the point where they're about to retire and then they say, oh, wait a minute, Maryland is about to take, state of Maryland is about to take a big old chunk out of what I've worked for. Let me get my ass up and move to Florida uh, so that I can shield some of my money. And that is absolutely reasonable. A recent increase in the state's housing regulations and mandates requiring low income housing and high density developments are also expensive. Nutting's children are fifth generation ranchers. So there we go. We're not going to pick that ranch up and move it to Texas, are we? And he has taught them to care for the land. We have a chance to take care of the land better than the state of California. The proposed secession, okay, here's the meat of the matter, hinges on Article 4, Section 3, Clause 1, which provides the process of forming a new state. This article, sometimes called the Admissions Clause, the U.S. Constitution, declares no state can be formed within the jurisdiction of any other state without the consent of the legislatures of that state, the first state, and the U.S. Congress. The lady already said, Durst already said, California's not playing ball. It's Constitution, beauty of the Constitution is written simply. That's why we can't rewrite it because Second Amendment won't be in there and the First Amendment will be thicker than the Bible with all kinds of clauses to, you know, penalize you if you express your thoughts freely. The uh, con uh, Constitution is very simple to understand. And based on that, I'm no lawyer, but it seems pretty cut and dry to me. This is sometimes called the admission clause, but Durst calls it the hostage clause because it holds the people who are unhappy with the current situation hostage. No, it doesn't. You can leave. You can divest yourself of your property that is physically connected to the state of California. You can leave. You're not being held hostage. Don't do that now. The second clause, Article 4, Section 3, Clause 2 states that Congress shall have the power to dispose of and make all needful rules and regulations respecting the territory or other property belonging to the United States. The group points to the fact that 46% of the land in El Dorado County is federal forest land. And the county was formed before the state. Nutting said he believes the county could use this clause to go straight to Congress. Although he said they will have to obtain expert legal advice at some point. Eh, if, if the forest land is federal, but you guys don't live in the forest, right? So if only 46% of the land in the county is under some sort of federal jurisdiction and the remainder is the land that you guys do business on and live on, you're, you're stating that the Congress and the federal government would have no, no jurisdiction, right? Uh, Margaret Russell, a law professor at Santa Clara University and constitutional law expert, now here comes the expert, said this language does, does not allow counties to go directly to Congress. She says, I think this is a non-starter of an argument for them. There's no such thing as a county in the constitutional structure, she added. They derive their power from the state. The U.S. Constitution doesn't say anything about the role of counties and makes it clear that the state is the relevant stakeholder, she said. As for representation, the state mirrors the structure of Congress. This allows representation based on population and representation in the Senate based on equalizing power across the government. So... Guys, over there in El Dorado County, I think the only course of action for you is to go ahead and leave. Go ahead and leave. It's a tough pill to, sw pill to swallow, and it could happen to any of us anywhere. Our politics could change. And that is why, me personally, with areas of the country that uh, my wife and I are looking at, we're pulling up the city council or county council website. Okay, take a look at them, their backgrounds, their policies. Okay, we got our own criteria. Build yours. We're looking at population size. We're looking at the state that it's contained within, right? Now, we're not immortal, my wife and I, but we know a lot can happen in 40 years. My, my family has a pretty decent lifespan up until the mid-90s, so... Now, I don't want to get into a situation where I'm like an El Dorado County resident and talking about... I got to get the hell out of here. I've bought land and it, no, I don't want to be in that situation. Not while I am here on this earth. Now, guys, I want you to go ahead and 
take a look at this video. This video is talking about one of the issues uh, we find ourselves in, in terms of land and food that we're producing. Do you know Bill Gates wants to end natural food? He wants to end it. And he wants you to eat lab-grown chicken. What do you think he's eating tonight? It ain't lamb. Lab-grown chicken. Check out the video, guys. I'll talk to you soon.